Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 318, and you can email the show at pedalshift at pedalshift.net or text me at 202-930-1109 and check Pedal Shift out on all the socials as well. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 318th edition of the Pedal Shift Project. My name is Tim Mooney. Thanks so much for joining on this edition, Chapter 3 of the 2023 California Adventure. It was a new approach to an old triumph, revisiting the end of my 2014 Pacific Coast tour at the Mexican border. But with the remnants of the storm that gave me windy conditions and overflowing rivers all throughout Southern California stand in the way of this chapter's goal... morning for our chapter three. Chapter three of the California 2023 tour is all about revisiting the end of my 2014 tour and it is a border run loop and this morning I've got a little extra time because the separation between chapter three and chapter four actually is not a full day but it's a full day. <laughs> in the other sense of the word. And that is the reason why I'm taking my time this morning. It is about 20 or so miles in terms of a ride down to the border park where I intend to go to today. But I also have a couple of other adventures to check off. Adventure number one already happened, and that is to find good local coffee. And boy, did I ever. I found a little corner place here by the hotel that I'm staying at in downtown San Diego, and it was fantastic. Really good pour over, really great breakfast sandwich mission accomplished. <laughs> I feel like I'm really like all geared up and ready to go in terms of just having some food into me, in me. The other thing that I'd like to do in addition to getting down to the ferry and getting over to Coronado, which is the route that I've got, is I would like to find a great fish taco place for my lunch. And I got a line on a place from a coworker in D.C. who had been here years ago, but it appears that that place might not have made it through COVID, unfortunately. However, <laughs> we are in San Diego and San Diego County, and there is plenty of opportunities out there. So that's probably going to be on my return trip after I visit the border to find out a place. And I may just let the universe discover it for me. And that sounds like a, a good a good way to do it. That's what happened when I did that in 2014. My favorite fish taco place of the entire trip was a kind of a tie between a place that I found in Vista, I think, and the one that was in LA that I cannot remember where it was. Venice. It was in Venice. So I'm just going to let things come to me. Today is, although it's going to be about a about the same mileage as yesterday, for some reason it feels like it's not as robust as it were, just because it's not split up so much and I'm not traveling over such a long distance as I did yesterday with all the fast forwards. I also have a time deadline today, unlike yesterday. In a sense, yesterday, the sunset was kind of my deadline. And I, I missed it in the sense that it, the sun came down in the middle of the train ride before I ended up riding to the hotel. But yeah, I had lights and everything was fine with that. Today, my timeline is a hard stop, and that is I have a flight to San Jose, which of course is going to be a part of chapter four. At some point, we're going to draw a line between the end of chapter three and chapter four, even though it's the same day. So I'll go more into that later, but that is going to be the, in some ways, the defining line between what you're going to be hearing on this particular episode and what you're going to be hearing on the next episode. Okay, so I think that what we're going to do is do a little bit of a look-see on the bike. Everything looks good so far. I wanted to see if I could move my saddle back any, and unfortunately, I can't. It is as far back as it can go. I found yesterday that my sits bones were hanging over the back edge of it, and I wonder if there's just some other possible way that I can make it so that the brook saddle can go back a little bit more. There may be a, a way to do it, but... As many of you know, I've never been a big fiddler with the saddle. Usually I find it a good spot and I just kind of adapt to it rather than the other way around. And interestingly, one of the things that happened when I got the prompt and surfaced, by the way, has been fantastic. 
is the fact that he adjusted the saddle a little bit and it's never quite been right. So I tried to rejigger it back to the level that I liked before. We'll see if that works out. I, I, I'm usually very loath to change the saddle all that much, the angles or anything like that, because it does impact your comfort quite a bit with just even a small change in the angle. So we'll see what happens today. <laughs> all right, let's see. So I'm going to be packing up. I have to pack up with the mindfulness, I'm going to need to rejigger the configuration when I get to the airport, but I'm probably going to have plenty of time when all of a sudden done. My flight isn't until 730. I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet. And so that's going to be well after sundown. So I think that what I'm going to try to do is get to the airport before sundown, well before sundown. I need to do that anyways, just to get things checked in and on board. And so yeah, I probably will have plenty of time. It doesn't take long. I, I relearned yesterday. I had eight minutes until the bus came yesterday in Newport Beach. And I was able to very quickly and just throw all the stuff in the bag. But I think it's different when you're going the other way around, when you're trying to do something more particular about what's in and what's out. And that's certainly going to be the case for this trip tonight. But that's not for this episode. That's for chapter four for you. All right, let's get some things together. It is, let me check, it is just 9 a.m. right now. So Lots of time, no rush at all. I don't even have to be out of the hotel until 11, but I think I'm going to get out of here a little bit earlier just because I want to enjoy the day as much as I can and being in a dark room with paper thin walls. I could hear the next door's conversation a lot this morning. No, it's not necessarily a screaming adventure nor something that I would necessarily want to be hearing much on the podcast anyways. So let's get rolling. On the way through downtown, the bike lane on 6th, interesting thing to note, as I roll here. It's an, a little annoying. I'm very used to bike routes in DC and elsewhere where the signals are timed for the speed of a bike so that you pretty much can roll through. If, as long as you're keeping a reasonable speed, every intersection, that is not the case here in San Diego. I've stopped at every single intersection. Very interesting. On the way to the ferry, looking forward to that. Yeah, here we are again, yet another I mean, every single block, do better San Diego. All right, we're at Marina Park and I'm at the loading dock for the ferry, the Coronado Ferry, operated by Flagship Cruises and Events. Yeah, you can buy your tickets here, you can buy them online, yada, yada, yada. I am early by a fair amount. Uh, and that is my bike falling because this thing is crap. All right, let's see, bike is good. Let's see, it is, I'm very early actually. I could have, it's 10.09. 10 I think I'm in the habit of coming 15 minutes ahead of any conveyance because I was 15 minutes early for my other, my train yesterday. I'm feeling like I needed to rush, but you just never know how fast it is to bike someplace. I certainly had the issues with the lights on the way down here, but eh, it was fine. It's just surprising when, well, you can tell when bikes are made a priority within any given municipal landscape by a bunch of different factors. First of all, is there any infrastructure? Sure, there was infrastructure, but then, of course, just the timing of the lights. It's just really interesting to be in a place that doesn't have that timed properly. All right, man, San Diego is just freaking beautiful. Just, just a gorgeous day. The baseball stadium's in the middle of the city and I took a picture of that. I'm not a huge baseball fan, but it's just kind of like, eh, it's kind of neat to see just it being a part of the fabric of the community here. This is the convention center and the airport kind of have similar vibes, you know, very green glass and kind of sailing motif uh, to it all. And, it's, it's a really, really pleasant place to exist, I, I feel like. Looking at the bridge that takes motorized vehicles to Coronado, it's very, very high up because, of course, we've got major, major shipping vessels. We've also got military around here as well. So lots of stuff going on around San Diego. Looking forward to my ride. Of course, this is a bit of a pause. I only went about a mile or two, and now I'm going to be going about, you know, it's, I think it's just shy of 20 miles all the way down to the border. And then it's the hunt for fish tacos. But much adventure in between now and then, including, of course, the ferry across to Coronado. All right, we are all aboard. There's no nonsense, man. Everybody's on and take off. All the other passengers went up to the top deck, which probably offers the best views. The staircase is more like a ladder, so obviously the bike's not going up there. So I am by myself outside on what appears to be the port side, the left side of the boat, 
about Midway. I am a landlubber, as they say. I get motion sick pretty easily. This is a really short ride, though, so I'm not too concerned. I think I'm on the port side. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is the starboard side. At least, at least it seems like we're going out this direction and where I'm on the right side. Well, that works fine for me. No, no complaints so far. A fun way to get to Coronado. Open question whether I'm going to take the ferry back or not. I think if the biking is like really, really superb, I may come back this way. The upside to the return trip not being via Coronado is that's the route that I took in 2014. So it would be kind of repeating that. But also there's a ton more in the way of like towns and stuff. And there is decent bike infrastructure. It's just really busy. So it's gonna depend on where my headspace is at. All right, well, more to come and I'll uh, snap a few pics. So you can check most of these pictures out, by the way, are gonna end up in the ride with GPS side of things. And you can see that in the show notes or you can just look for pedal shift in ride with GPS and they are made public by the time the pod comes out. They're also embedded in the show notes as well. So you can also see the route and all the other kind of fun stuff that is going on with the ride and clips. All right, more to come in chapter three. So midway across the water here at the channel, whatever it is, I was correct that actually we turned around. I am on the port side facing the Coronado Bridge. I just out of curiosity, I turned on my ride with GPS tracker again, just to see speed wise, because it does show me cycling across this basically as part of this route. But the interesting thing is that we are traveling at about a little over eight miles per hour. So if I were able to bike on the surface and it were a good surface, if it was like pavement, I could be beating this ship across. However, water, <laughs> we're almost there. So looking forward to starting the, the ride soon. I was in Coronado years ago. There was a hotel here. Now hotels on here are, are largely very expensive because fantastic views and stuff but like it was a really inexpensive hotel the cheapest in San Diego so I stayed there for a work trip for gosh I would say three days and it was crazy amazing and a very good memory all right where to go all right I take it all back <laughs> well this is Coronado not San Diego but holy moly the Bayshore bike ride what what a grand piece of infrastructure now you're hearing a lot of traffic. This is California Route 75 over my right shoulder here. This is the main thoroughfare, I think, through the island. But yeah, I, this is a fully separated paved bike path with beautiful gardening. Is that the word I'm looking for? Landscaping, beautiful landscaping. It's a clearly a, where I went through a beautiful residential area. It's, this is a, this is a beautiful, beautiful place to live or play or whatever and a fantastic add-on to my little trip here. Lots of, lots of folks cycling. It, it is predominantly, I shouldn't even say, I think it is exclusively road bikes that I've been seeing in the San Diego area, which kind of makes sense. I mean, if I lived here, the infrastructure certainly allows for putting down the hammer in a bunch of places, not here. The, chapter two route man if i if i was a, a san diego area resident or i shouldn't even say that i think you'd have to be further north up if i lived in oceanside or san clemente boy oh boy you'd you'd have a hard time saying no to road bikes to really i mean you can you can grab some speed but all right anyways lots of lots of great ways to stay fit in this particular area. We're in the city of Coronado right now, by the way, if I haven't mentioned that. And I've got about seven miles or so until Imperial Beach, which is roughly the area where the border is. It's a little bit further than that, but we'll check in a few more times as we make this anniversary border run. We're eight, eight, eight and three quarters years. We're nearly nine years from the, the, the time of that 2014 finale, so. Looking forward to revisiting it. Just about halfway to the turnaround point at the border, about 12 miles to go. So a little, little bit less time and taking a quick break, a little sugar break. I got a sleeve of Oreos because that seemed like something fun. And part, partially this is an area where there's just nothing to something small snack wise. So I thought I would carry them with me. Riding is great. I am catching a bit of a headwind. And as you can hear, the traffic is really 
Louisiana. But because I'm on a separated area, it's not like I'm on a shoulder, which I typically am if I'm on a road route. So this is really fantastic. I'm inclined to come back this way if I can find a place in Imperial Beach that looks good for a taco or, or lunch of some kind, which I imagine I should be able to find. And from Imperial Beach, it's a short ride into the, uh, to the border. So I may go, I don't know if I'm going to get lunch first or not. I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll decide when we get there. But just a glorious morning. Just not a, not a cloud in the sky. Now, normally, you know me, I'm, I'm Mr. I hate sun exposure, but it's so cool out right now that, what is it? It is 55, and it's not going to get much warmer than this. So maybe, maybe it'll hit 60 later. But yeah, just glorious, <laughs> glorious riding conditions. Stripping off a few layers. I think I'm gonna try riding more with one layer plus my green jacket because it's got pit zips and everything that's good for temperature control. It also is a higher neckline, so it'll cover a little bit more from sun. I am wearing a bandana. Not so much, I mean, it, it catches some sweat, but also just because there are holes, there are vents in my helmet, you know, it's just to keep the sun off of my head directly. I think is also a pretty smart idea. It, this is this is one of those dangerous situations where you can get too much sun exposure and not even realize it until it's way too late. So staying covered up is the way to go, I think. Let's see, I talked about the headwind. It's not that bad, it's really light, but it's, it's noticeable. And, oh, saddle. That was the other thing I meant to, one to mention. A saddle, my adjustment was perfect. It worked out, it's worked out really great. Just changing that angle back to where it was before. And it feels very comfortable, so very excited about that as part of the ride. A seat post is still slipping a little bit, but it's much more manageable than it was in Florida. So whatever I've been doing, tinkering with it, I think has helped. But I think it still needs to be maybe fully removed and really cleaned off. And, and maybe even the sleeve itself needs a, a cleaning on the inside. I've read about that too. So yeah, so Brompton's been doing great as, as it always does. Taking a quick peek at the tires. It's interesting, the wear pattern is on one side. I think it's just how it rides on the front tire. Now, it might just be over time. The back tire is the newer of the two, which, of course, you all heard about if you were with the show last year. But I think I may be probably in the market for a new front tire in the not terribly distant future. Oh, and, and as I look at this, actually, it is not wearing differently. It's just the, the sand. It's an optical illusion of the little bit of sand that is on where the middle area where it's riding and just how the sun's hitting it. So yeah, no, no issues with wear on that front tire. But I do think that that one's probably got a few more trips left in it before I start considering replacing that. But otherwise, man, this little bike, it sure as heck can take you places. And of course, in chapter four, we're going to be testing the, the gate checking ability and how it stands up to all of that. But that's for another podcast. And we will talk more about that later on. On the south side of the channel, whatever, whatever it is that makes Coronado Island from the San Diego proper, which means I'm very close to Imperial Beach. I was just looking at the map of my route and it swings me way around for reasons that I'm not 100% clear on. And so there's a possibility that I may try to maybe cut off some mileage, but there's probably a good reason. This was a, a route that was suggested by Google Maps, but then again, it was also hard to get to get it to route me to the proper park. I wanted to take me to a different one. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. I, I may, may sit down and figure it out. I'm fine from a hunger perspective, so I don't think I'm gonna get lunch on this part of the journey. I think I'll do that on the way back and then I can really kind of downshift to slower speeds because I have plenty of time before I have to be at the San Diego airport. Just plenty of time. I, I resist, resisted the thought of leaving my bags at the hotel. It, it, the hotel was way up on a hill. And also it wasn't as, oh, how do I want to put it? It wasn't like there was bell services or something like that. It was much more of a kind of old fashioned motel kind of a thing, which is perfectly fine. But I, I just wasn't sure if they, if, if uh, them storing my bag, if they had a very robust system for that, considering I have some pretty, uh, pretty important gear in, in there that I would like to make sure is kept safe. So I am hauling everything, which is fine. It's not a lot. I've been doing it the whole trip, so it's not a big deal. So I don't have to go back to a hotel. I don't have to go back into downtown if I don't want to. So I've, I've got a lot of different options here to fill my day. I'm seeing a blue heron flying right by me right now. This is a beautiful wildlife sanctuary. It's very clear that they're trying to do some restorative work here. It's called the Silver Strand on the Coronado side. 
just a really glorious ride. It's very likely that I'll return that way just because it's so easy and such a straight shot and just beautiful. And coming back, I'll have the pretty stuff on my right shoulder as opposed to over, over my left shoulder. So I'll be that much closer. So lots more to come here on this day of adventure as we get closer and closer to the Mexican border. More to come. Out of the Imperial Valley area and into what it feels more like, kind of like, oh, how do I, would I describe it? Almost like the country area, the very non build up area between here and the border. A lot of horses passing by some right now. Hello, horses. And, oh, just not built up areas. And I don't know if that's by design, if that's by zoning, whatever, but things get really open really quickly around here. The Google directions were incorrect, which as I recall, they sort of fall apart down this direction. I was going over sand the last time, if memory serves, on a, a bad trail. There was a private drive that it wanted me to go down that was completely gated off. Probably gated off because Google keeps telling bicyclists to go that way. But yeah, going by some farm stands and whatnot, the vibe, is very, we're starting to transition, you know? Transition away from a, a, a San Diego vibe to a Mexico vibe, uh, just straight up. So yeah, so it, I, I always think this is kind of a cool section right here. All right, so now I'm about four miles away because it's a little bit of a roundabout area between here and, and the border park where I'm gonna be going to. I'm seeing a sign that says flooded, which doesn't sound very good. So I'm hoping that I can make this work seeing a border patrol helicopter already and I'll, i remember nine years ago it was how would i put it it felt like kind of like police state and then on the other side of the wall there were like a whole bunch of people in bathing suits on the beach like partying <laughs> so it, such a contrast but in any event i'm hoping i can make it there but if this road is flooded out i may have to rethink my approach here so we'll we'll see how it goes well this is interesting I could get through this, you can hear it. This road is very, very flooded and I mean, a, a creek is going right over and through it. it. The road is technically closed, but I'm gonna keep going. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> We're gonna give it a shot. We'll see what happens. I, I can see the border wall from here. I am at the border. I, I would say mission accomplished, but I would really like to get back to where I was before. This is a very kind of steep road if memory serves. So it's gonna take some doing on the little clown bike compared to the safari, but yeah, I'd like to give it a shot. I was able to roll through two flooded areas without really any problem. So yeah, we're just gonna keep on trying. And if someone turns me around, someone turns me around. <laughs> okay, folks, I know my limits when I see them. This road is fully flooded further on down and I don't know how deep it is. It's impossible to tell because the water is real muddy. Yeah, we're, we're just gonna to have to say here, I see the mountains that formed the border. Right here, I've seen the wall. I am quite literally at the border. We're gonna call this the turnaround point. It's really unfortunate because I really wanted to be at the coastal area there just to kind of revisit it. Maybe some other time I'll be able to do it. But this is a bridge too far, a bridgeless span too far to be able to pull off. I took a picture, it'll show up and, and I think it'll also probably mark it as well to show exactly how far I am from the border. I'm quite literally on top of it. So end of adventure at this point, at least I'm a little bummed, but again, I, I can see the dry part of the road, but this just seems to be too deep for my little crown wheels. And I don't want to risk harming the bike out here in the middle of nowhere. So from Filiberto's drive through I am having the fish tacos and a Mexican Coke and what a fun way to start the beginning of the end of this chapter. I'm still trying to figure out when I'm going to end chapter three and begin chapter four. I think that the answer is going to be as I get closer to San Diego, I think we're going to make the close for this particular episode. It was supposed to be a loop. So I do think that that's how we're going to approach things. So first lunch, very excited for this. Um, very cool out, very nice, a lot of sun. So I'm actually really happy to be in the shade. I've been in the sun for so long. 
So I'm kind of reflecting on the failure to get to my precise destination. And so much of this trip was defined by the fact that it's that big rainstorm that came through, you know, the winds of the first chapter and all sorts of other things. You know, it kind of makes some sense that that storm ended up having ramifications all the way here in chapter three. So, you know, we take what we are given when it comes to bike touring and that is yet another example of it. So I'm going to enjoy this wonderful Mexican Coke. I'm going to enjoy some fish tacos and there will be a review in the next segment. Maybe, who knows? But oh, one other thing. I'm gonna I may swing by Rad Power Bikes. They have a location here, literally on my ride back. I may swing in. I'm intrigued with them for touring purposes. I might, I might have a few minutes there. From Chula Vista, a nice view of I don't know what I think it's a bay and uh, city of San Diego, and I'm at Novo Brazilian Brewing Company in Chula Vista, and it's got a beautiful view here ton of taps and I thought, eh, why the heck not? I normally am not a drink a beer while I still have mileage left kind of guy, but it's such minimal mileage and nice cool day out. Eh, let's give it a shot. So uh, review of the fish tacos. Holy moly. Great. It, quite literally the best I've ever had. Really quite good. Yeah. The further south you go in California, the better the fish tacos is a good general rule. Yeah. So I got tons of time left for my day. Fair amount of time left in this chapter as well. So I'm going to enjoy this beer, enjoy the vibes and the clock is ticking on my time here in Southern California. So may as well soak it up. So more to come and I've got about, oh, I think it's about six, seven miles until I get back to the ferry. Oh, by the way, if you haven't figured it out, I'm taking the ferry back and taking the same route down. It's just too good here on, on Coronado to, um, to not take it. It's too good of a riding vibe. So we'll go up back to, back through Coronado City, take the ferry back and figure out what, <laughs> how much time I have. And we will close out chapter three, I think at the ferry station in San Diego. I think that makes the most sense. All right, we are back on the trail. And as you can probably hear, <laughs> I got 10 miles of headwinds, which I would have gotten on the other side too. So this was unavoidable. This is your kind of conditions, although it's a little heavier than normal. And also why typically on the Pacific Coast route, starting about, you know, now-ish, as the weather starts to get better, particularly down here in Southern California, but also up, up the Pacific coast, you're gonna have an easier time if you go southbound. And I've recently read a lot of folks suggesting, oh, it's not that big of a deal, northbound, don't listen to anybody. I'm like, okay, all right. You all can hear what I'm talking about though. There are definitely prevailing winds and ignoring that and, kind of like ramboing through it. I mean, you could do it. Ride your ride, man. <laughs> but don't, don't suggest that it is a nothing thing because it's definitely a thing. All right. I'm sure you'll hear from me a couple times on this 10 miles, but 10 miles to the ferry according to the sign. Off we go. Taking a quick break, kind of coincidentally out of the same bus shelter I took a break at earlier this morning. Happenstance, really, more than anything else. About maybe three and a half miles, three, three and a half miles away from Coronado City. And then I'll, I'll have to hook in, cross the city through the residential area and get to the ferry. No idea when the ferry is leaving. I believe there are two ferries, one that goes to the convention center, which is where I took it from today. And then one that goes to a different pier, which is further north from there, which frankly is probably would save me a little bit of time. But then again, I don't know what I'm doing once I get there. You'll find out in chapter four, but yeah, I, it, it, I'm just I'm just moving my way back to the city of San Diego and then we'll figure it all out from there based on what time I have left. Am I hungry? Who knows? Do I want to get a beer, another beer? Sure, why not? We'll figure that all out. But this trail, this this route, protected bike lane, whatever you want to call it, is just so great. It just moves so well and a great multi-use path. Lots of folks are running and biking on it. It's just fantastic. And, and you can really build some miles on it. It's, it's pretty fantastic. All right, I'm going to have another sip of Gatorade and then off we go. Back in the city of Coronado, I'm taking the scenic route rather than the kind of residential route back 
And there is an interesting use of bike lanes. Someone's salmoning in this ultra wide lane, and there is one on the other side. Fantastic. And I take it back, they're going into their vehicle. So, my apologies for being a dick. All right, let's see. Oh, well, no, there here come two other people doing it. So I take back my, my apology. I just apply it to them. I'm, this is a bit longer than it would have been apparently, but it's flatter. I think Coronado City is one giant golf course, <laughs> or at least there's an enormous golf course that's part of it. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, San Diego, lots of outdoor stuff. Boy, the homes here are enormous. They look like, they look like a wilderness lodge resort at <laughs> Disney World, one of them here. Yeah, this is definitely not the low income section of town. Holy moly. Yeah, I've often known that Coronado was kind of a wealthy enclave, but I am now seeing it. All right, very close to the ferry, which means we are very close to the close of chapter three. And what a day it's been. It's been so fun. It really has been. It's, it's met expectations, it's deviated from them but it's been a lot of fun. From the ferry, the Coronado Ferry, this is gonna be going back to the Broadway Pier, which is the further one north, so it actually changes things up a little bit for me, but all is good. This ferry, unlike the other one, is a little bit larger. It has huge bike racks inside, which is very handy. I've got my bike leaning up against some stuff. I've got some Bill Crescent Rock Humper front, front suspension legs and some road bikes. Pretty cool. Ferry leaves in five minutes. I rode up literally right up to it as they were starting to accept tickets. So this, this could have been more perfect. Yeah, 3.30, I'll be across. It'll be, uh, I'll have a few hours to play with, to be perfectly honest. And, you know, that'll be all a part of chapter four, which you'll be catching next time. And uh, it will be all about the adventure to get me, myself, and my bike up to San Jose and the adventure of day checking the bike, which I've never done before. Well, I kind of have, but uh, this is going to be a little different. This time I have to because of the nature of the flight. All right. Thanks for joining on chat, uh, chapter three. This was tons of fun, lots of excitement, and I look forward to bringing you one more chapter of this entire adventure next time. <laughs> Statistics, transportation modes, two, bike and ferry, miles ferried, five-ish, miles biked, 33.7, number of brutally shanked golf balls observed, followed by an internal sarcastic yell of, good ball, one, fish tacos, two, flooded roads crossed, two, flooded roads not crossed, one, borders seen, one, flats, zero. And as always, we like to close out the show with a special shout out to the Pedal Shift Society. Because of support from listeners like you, Pedal Shift is a weekly bicycle touring podcast with a global community. Expanding into live shows and covering new tours, if you like what you hear, you can support the show for five bucks, two bucks, or even a buck a month. And there's one shot and annual options. If you're not into the small monthly thing, check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society. On to the society. Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lean, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Keith Nagel, Brock Didis, Thomas Skadow, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Harry Telgatis, Chris Barron, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Mr. T, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Cody Florchinger, Tom Beninati, Greg Braithwaite, Sandy Pizio, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Joseph Quinn, Drew Porter, Byron Patterson, Joachim Robber, Ray Jackson, Jeff Fry, Kenny Mikey, Lisa Hart, John Denkler, Steve Hankel, Miguel Quinones, Alejandro Aviles Reyes, Keith Spangler, Greg Towner, Jody Zoranen, Lucas Barwick, Michael Baker, Brian Bechtold, Reinhardt Bigel, Greg Middlemas, Connie Moore, William Gothman, Brian Benton, Joan Churchill, Mike Bender, Rick Weinberg, Billy Crafton, Gary Matushak, Greg Latois Lopez, James Sloan, Jonathan Dillard, John Funk, Ronald Paroli, Dave Roll, Brian Hafner, Misha LeBlanc, Ari Messenger, David Gropke, Todd Grossbeck, Wally Estrella, Sue Reinert, John Lico, Stephen Granada, Philip Mueller, Robert Lackey, 
Dominic Carroll, Jackie McCullough, John Hickman, Carl Presseau, David Neves, Patty Louise, Terry Fitzgerald, Peter Steinmetz, Timothy Fitzpatrick, Michael Lazuski, Hank O'Donnell, David Zanoni, David Weil, Matthew Sponsa, Chad Reno, Spartan Dale, Carolyn Ferguson, Peggy Littlefield, Lauren Allen Smith, Eric Burns, Thomas Pearl, Darren McKibben, Richard Stewart, Dave Fletcher, Jack Smith, Luke Parkinson, Ryan Patterson, Sarus Faravar, John Gardner, Sam Scruggs, Dwight Pintinger, and Connie Bowder. And thanks also to all new and anonymous folks for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available.